Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Zach Ellsworth. And I'm Josh Ellsworth, and we'll be your hosts on the Stalls TV Morning Show, giving you buzz, news, and know-how at the frequency your business needs it. Go ahead. The Stalls TV I Morning Show. I interrupted him already. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It's, right. it's our first time. The Stalls TV Morning Show is designed to really help you grow in your business. So it's ideas and taking a look at successful businesses, what they're doing right, which was the point of the poll question that we started things off with on whether or not you've heard of Teespring before. Yeah, we'll talk about that more in a minute. want to tell you a little bit about how often we'll be coming to you here. This is our pilot episode. We want to thank you for logging in and watching. We will be coming to you live every uh, Monday morning beginning June 22nd at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, so you can plan to sign up and watch us then. Excellent, and you can go to stallstv.com, click on the events tab, and the June 22nd episode is there waiting for you to sign up after this episode concludes, of course. So to kick things off on the Stalls TV Morning Show, we're kind of working through the format you yep. know, as we go through, but one of the things we definitely want to share is success stories of businesses that are doing well. And one of those is Teespring. So let's sit, take a seat down yeah, and discuss uh, Teespring and what they're doing right. You can visit teespring.com and uh, follow along after the show. Yeah, absolutely. So we had launched a poll when you logged on that you should have seen there, uh, just asking you if you've ever heard of teespring.com before. So what uh, we have uh, some of our producers and directors and some help sitting around. Let's uh, get some help from them. How many of you have actually heard of teespring.com before? What were our results from that poll, Jody? Uh, we have 33% yes, 67% no. Okay, so 33% of you have heard of teespring.com, 67% of you have not. But uh, what we would like to do is kind of tell you what it is, how it works, and walk through their website. So what teespring.com is, it's a website that sells decorated apparel, uh, and they use screen printing as their main technology. And Josh is going to take a minute to walk you through the website. Okay, so we're on teespring.com here. And you can see the, the first call to action that they have is kind of create and sell t-shirts you can be proud of and a big green click started now uh, button to get started. So I'm going to click on that and we'll show you what you can do. Now the point of the website is anybody, uh, meaning business, brand, designer, non-designer, consumer, anybody can create a customized t-shirt and sell it on teespring.com. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to start by our design screen on teespring.com. It's a three-step process. Step one is create your artwork. So this is much like a lot of the online designers you see out there in the marketplace where they give you a, a specified print area. You can drop text onto that. Of course, you can do some font changes, change color. It's a very smooth, uh, easy to use interface. Um, sort of no frills to make it very simple and easy for the user. Mm -hmm. So I'll drop a Stalls TV text on there. Of course, we can move that, size it, customize it. And then you can, of course, add artwork uh, to your shirt. Now, Teespring has a library of artwork that you can choose from, or you can upload your own artwork onto the t-shirt, depending on your design idea. So the idea here is you want to create something on the garment that shares your idea that you can sell and ultimately reach your fundraising or your campaign goals. So let's just browse some artwork. Stalls TV design, of course, we're going to look for a TV set to drop onto the t-shirt. Um, much like my first point of it, I can change the color. And all of the pricing is updating live on the right-hand side of the screen here. So if you look on the right-hand side, you'll see base cost. And right now, based on the customization I've made, it's $7.40 is the base cost at 50 shirts. Now, the reason uh, Teespring sets it up at 50 shirts is because they're using screen printing production mm -hmm. to drive the back end of the process. So they expect that you'll be able to um, sell 50 shirts to achieve this base cost. And you can change that number in the next step. Now, of course, you can change your garment color as well, and it'll give you a preview. You can expand the palette here. Um, you can change the style of shirt, and they keep it very simple. There's a drop-down of styles, and they basically utilize a good, better, best system. So you have your budget-friendly t-shirt that's the default. Of course, I can change to the top-of-the-line shirt, or I can just change to something middle-of-the-road like a premium ring spun tee. Um, of course, there's a different color palette for every garment, so it will try to change to a light color, but you may have to sort of tweak that as you go through and your base cost will adjust accordingly. Now right now on the site they let you design front and back. There's no sleeve placements, no really uh, unique placements. It's very simple. Design front, design back, and then you have an option to sell this design. So keep in mind I'm creating this and my idea is to sell it to our viewers here today or to sell it to all my friends, all my family on Facebook, everybody I know that's associated with the brand and wants to help support the brand. So I'll click sell this design at that point, 
it starts to kick out an estimated profit if you were to print 50 shirts and sell it, sell it at their suggested pricing. And what I like about Teespring, it's very um, driven on profit per sale or profit per shirt, which mm -hmm. is a discipline that I think decorators should look to to make sure they're making enough money on every single shirt they print, not just a gross profit margin number, but that's for another day. Um, so we can change the number of shirts here. Let's say we only want to set our goal at 24 shirts on this one. I can set it at 24 shirts. It'll tell me if I sell 24, I'm, I'll make $218 approximately in profit at the $18 price point. Uh, let's say I think I can sell this for $15. Now I'm going to make $146 on that program. So the idea is you customize, you set your price, set your campaign goal, and then ultimately you write a description and start to sell it. And so Teespring gives you these tools. It, it looks a lot like a uh, a YouTube video description or a description on any e-commerce site where you simply title your garment, you write a description that can be keyword friendly, they try to keep it uh, short, succinct to a certain number of characters, and ultimately you set a length for your campaign and it gives you a URL where you can go out and ultimately sell that shirt. And how much does it cost me to do that? Absolutely free. So the idea is it cost me, what, two minutes of time? <laughs> yeah. Is really what it is. So you can come up with a variety of campaigns a variety of causes and start to sell any shirt as you get an idea. Yeah, yeah, That's absolutely. It. And uh, we mentioned at the beginning that we want to feature successful businesses to give uh, our viewers ideas on how they can be successful. So to talk a little bit, a few stats on how successful Teespring actually is. Uh, in their first eight months when they launched, they sold over a million dollars uh, worth of T-shirts in just eight months. They are one of the top 1,500 most visited websites in the United States. And just last year, they printed 7 million t-shirts. 7 that's, million t-shirts. That's t -shirts. a lot of t-shirts. Yeah, the stat I read was one in 75 Americans bought a t-shirt or owned a t-shirt from Teespring in the year 2014. Yeah, so it's working really well uh, for them and for the folks who are using the service. So why do you think it's, it's working so well for them? Why has it taken off the way it has? Well, let's start basic. So just okay. the, the process that we went through, um, it's pretty simplistic. You know, they give you a basic selection of t-shirts. Mm -hmm. They leverage a good, better, best strategy. So they're, they're limiting selection, but giving you enough choices so you have a choice. Yeah. And then ultimately, you're creating one garment mm -hmm. and marketing that one garment. So it's a very sort of uh, targeted piece that you can take that design that idea, that link mm -hmm. out to an audience. You're not saying I'm going to create 40 garments and send customers to my website. They're creating a very specific targeted garment and going out and promoting it. Okay. Um, some of the stuff that, that I looked at, one of the reasons I think they're so successful, not only is it very uh, targeted or niche, but they have a whole university on their website that teaches people how to take those shirts that they've designed and actually sell them online through social media channels to reach friends, family, and those markets that they may not be currently hitting, but they may be a part of themselves. Yeah, and they give you the tools to uh, tie into social media. So I read a couple interesting stats in our research of this and mm -hmm. the research that our team did on this is 60% of the sales that happen on Teespring actually stem from social media. Wow. And to top that off, when you look at their web traffic, 25% of the web traffic mm -hmm. came from Facebook. They were at Facebook first, and their very next site they visited was Teespring. So I thought that was an interesting way that you can clearly see that people are creating concepts around um, causes, ideas, brands, events, you know, even a band. Yeah. And they are selling it and garnering support from their family and friends and sharing that out through social media, specifically Facebook. Okay. So I, I read, I mean, 7 million shirts is a lot of shirts to print. Just a little, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I read that they were building their own production facility, so they didn't actually make a lot of these shirts, although they helped their customers sell them, they didn't necessarily screen print them themselves. Yeah, you know, I think from what I can understand, the base technology to print these is screen printing. Mm -hmm. And if you look historically, I believe they started in 2011, and they started with a network of screen printers. Some of you actually may screen print for them. Yeah. Um, so basically, yeah. they kicked the work out to a network of printers. So once the goal or the campaign ended and that job was fulfilled, they would send that work out to a screen printer to decorate and ultimately ship. Uh, private label to their customer. Now, of course, you build the business like this, and mm. the advantage is what you're very lean, right? So yeah. there's not big investment in equipment, space, uh, facility, staff, all these things that are major challenges for any business. Um, they kind of took that off, focused on development, sales, marketing, and let decorators do what they do best and print for them. Yeah. Now you reach the tipping point, right? Yeah. 
and that's where you invest in facility. And so just this year, they actually built a, or invested in a 105,000 square foot printing facility, where if you visit their website, they're hiring uh, press operators and, and night shift, and it's estimated 300 employees uh, yeah. printing. So they're bringing a lot of that printing in-house now that they've achieved that sort of critical mass or that scale. Yeah, so it seems like, uh, to me, just when I first learned about this company, and uh, like we said, 60, 70% of you guys have never heard of them, but it's a really great idea to offer people a way to get their ideas out. And that's kind of what the uh, co-founder actually said. I found a quote from their co-founder to talk about what Teespring is really about, because a lot of people tend to uh, talk about them as a, uh, a place to crowd fund uh, a business or a cause or an idea. But what, but what the co-owner actually says is Teespring doesn't have anything to do with t-shirts, it's about bringing a great idea to market. So that's really what they're about, bringing ideas to market, not printing t-shirts. Yeah, if you really think about it, that's what we're all doing, right? Yeah. We're selling ideas, and you know this particular idea is wrapped up in the form of a, a t-shirt product, um, but that could easily change. I mean, I think part of the reason they've been successful, it's, you know, they've, they've stuck to the t-shirt, performance shirt, the, the wearable, yeah. um, and haven't diversified too much, but I read that they're gonna allow people to sort of take that idea and translate it over to these other items, um, whether it be a mug, a mouse pad. I'm not real sure what they're going, but the, uh, yeah. what the concept is they're going to move to other items. But just empowering your customers to uh, realize their idea or somebody with an idea and being the back-end production, I think, is something a lot of uh, decorators can learn from. And if you're thinking about starting your own printing business, um, Teespring may be a way uh, for you to sort of test market some some different ideas yeah. and see if it's something that can be successful before you jump in on equipment. Yeah, absolutely. So. Okay, so that's teespring.com. Yeah. We'd encourage you to visit their site. It's our discussion point for today. And the next section of our Stalls TV morning show that we're playing with here is buy, sell, hold. And I'm sure this is going to be a, a crowd favorite. I know it's my favorite. So let's <laughs> head over to the okay. uh, buy, sell, hold area and kind of go through this. So um, do you want to explain the basics of buy, sell, hold to the viewing audience? Today? Yeah, sure. The, uh, the basic idea is this is where we debate it and you guys rate it. So we use the terminology buy, sell, hold. We're kind of stealing it from uh, the stock market where buy basically means this is an idea or this is a trend where we really think that we can get in, we can make some money, we can get a foothold, we need to get in now and be on the front end of it. Right, and sell yep. is just like selling stock. When you think it's gonna dip or perhaps it's already, already dipped, basically we're gonna move away from this style. So whether that be, you know, this can be apparel, this can be design styles, it can be any number of things, but the idea is that the trend has stopped or it's getting ready to dip down yep. and we're going to get out, cut our losses and move on before it's too late. Yeah. And then hold is what you might think. It's not buying, it's not selling, it is holding still and seeing exactly what happens with the trend before we jump in. Just keep an eye on it, hold off and watch the trend and see where it's going. Good, good. So let's kick things off in our first uh, thing. And, we, and like we said, we're going to debate it and we're going to give you the opportunity to rate it. Um, our first topic is oversized shirts. Okay. So if you're in the apparel decorating world, you've probably seen these oversized shirts. And just to frame the concept, these are oversized. They've been primarily geared towards the female market. Um, they were popularized by uh, sort of the spirit jersey that you see on campus and universities. And that trend is translated over to retail and Victoria's Secret. And now yeah. it's pushing off its way down to the high schools, the dance schools, et cetera. And so you have a basic style, which is single color. This particular one's from J America. You have a, a, quite a few apparel manufacturers making this. We have a boxer craft style. It's called a pom-pom jersey. Two-tone style from Pennant Sportswear where we're doing some color blocking and then also a contrast color pocket on the front. And then the latest one uh, with this style is this sort of uh, billboard hoodie where we're actually throwing a hood on it trying to make it a little more masculine with the front decoration. So what do you think, Zach? Should decorators buy, sell, hold on these oversized shirts? Well, I'm going to give you the same advice that I get from viewers like you, and that is buy. They are buying this like crazy. That's why all of the manufacturers, uh, most of the manufacturers are coming out with oversized jerseys because they just continue to sell over and over again. People are looking for them because they can find them in retail spots like Victoria's Secret and other places like that. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to play devil's advocate on this one, but I think we're going to be in agreement, and I say buy as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't suggest that somebody jump all in with their own inventory, because these are expensive garments. Yeah. You know, we're talking anywhere between $12 and $20 a piece, depending on the style, yeah. as far as a blank cost. But the big advantage is the profit per piece is tremendous for a decorator. So when they're locking down that heat press, dragging that squeegee, however they're printing them, 
Um, this is an optimal way to make the maximum profit per piece for the labor hours and the dollars that are being spent. Yeah, because um, to decorate it, I mean, it's the same as decorating a t-shirt except for the size of the graphic really that you have the equipment to to print that size well yeah and i guess that's the thing you, you make the assumption that you have the equipment so you may need to invest in equipment to print these mm -hmm. um so if if a decorator doesn't have the equipment it does require specialized screen sizes um, in order to print these because the idea is that you would go full sort of elbow to elbow yeah. on the print area which ranges in size from a youth small to an adult double XL it's a big difference yeah but one thing I noticed that that's not happening with the major uh, manufacturers or people who are selling these in the retail is personalization nobody's really offering that at a mass scale that you can find across the the US yeah that's an opportunity so yeah. we've debated it why don't you rate it so what do you think buy sell or hold we'll launch it to our viewing audience remember buy means you're jumping in let's go with this trend it's hot sell means this is on its way down, let's get away from it. And hold means you're just gonna sit back and watch and stay put. So let's see if we are right or wrong or if it's unanimous. Yeah, I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope we're right on the first one. Yeah, that would be a good sign, right? <laughs> All right, I'll give you a couple more seconds to vote and let's close that off. And the verdict is buy. buy. So you guys Great. are all over with us. We're gonna buy on this one, jump in on the oversized shirts, and go to a trade show and find a vendor that's selling these or multiple vendors that's selling these. Absolutely. All right, so let's ratch, ratchet up the difficulty here. Okay. And our next one for buy, sell, hold is your traditional uh, PK knit polo. So this is the cotton-based polo. Um, it's PK, and this is a staple in many embroidery shops in the corporate world for professionals. What do you think we should do, buy, sell, or hold? I'll make you go first on all Yeah, this. you make me go first. I'm gonna, I am gonna be devil's advocate on this one, and I'm gonna say sell. So. Why? Yeah, I'd like to why? know why. Of course you want to know why. Because I wouldn't wear that shirt, and I don't want to sell stuff that I wouldn't wear or that I don't think my family or friends would wear. So I'm not going to wear it. I think that screen printing doesn't always look that great on it. Uh, I think heat printing can look bad on it, and your really mainline decorating method for a piquet knit polo is embroidery. And I'm, I'm sorry, embroiderers, I'm just not a fan. You're not a fan? No, I'm not a fan. What do you think? Okay, I'm going to say hold. I don't think this garment's going anywhere. I think your argument that you won't wear it so you wouldn't buy it is wrong because would you really wear this? I, somebody, I said somebody in my family. Somebody, your family. somebody okay. in my okay. family. I right. justified. So I'm going to say hold. I don't think this garment is going anywhere. I think it's a staple. Yes, people are going to move more towards performance polos, mm -hmm. and I think that's going to be the more popular style long term, but this isn't going to be an overnight transition. Yes, performance wear is growing and people are moving to that, but this cotton shirt is a very traditional market. It's a fundamental staple of every embroidery shop. Mm -hmm. You can contract the embroidery out. I think you should hold, stay put, keep this in your lines and keep showing it as a choice to customers. So okay. I'll say hold. I, I think we should go to the vote and see which one of us is right, if all right. either. So buy, sell, hold. Buy means jump all over it. It's a hot trend. Sell means get out. Get out. Sell. And hold, don't do that. <laughs> and hold means stay put. And we'll give you a few seconds to rate it. And then we will share the final result with the viewing audience. It's a close one. Hold! hold. Ah, that is not the way it worked out in rehearsal. <laughs> We're going to keep score. Two for two. two okay. For two. All okay. right. Maybe you can totally redeem yourself. Uh, I How about I let you intro this? Oh, and that'll give okay. you the opportunity to go last. All right, so this is sublimated camo. It's a sublimated pattern. We'll, we're talking camo specifically today, but we could talk sublimated patterns in general. These are very hot in the market. What are you gonna do with it? Are you gonna buy, sell, or hold on sublimated camo? So while I love the look at this garment, this is a nightmare for decorators to print. Okay. So if you're selling it blank, it may be one thing, but specific to the decoration, if I can curb my argument, uh -huh. I'm going to say you sell, you get away from this stuff. Yes, it's hot and it's trending, but I'm going to sell because I believe it presents too much risk to a decorator for returns. And ultimately, there's other things that a decorator can focus on. They don't need to play in this area. I'm okay. going to say sell. I am going to say buy because one, all of your blank apparel manufacturers are selling garments like this. So somebody's figured out a way to decorate it. Maybe you do sublimation and you buy them blank and sublimate it yourself. Two, I went shopping this weekend and there was sublimated camo in literally every store I walked into from Under Armour to the Coach outlet. My wife was shopping for a bag and there were sublimated camo bags and jackets in the Coach outlet. So I'm saying you buy 
because it's in every retail store and you want to be on trend, you figure out a way to decorate it. Well, people dress like they're going deer hunting in Fayette County. Well, that's so true. That's sunny. true. <laughs> You're in that's Pennsylvania. True. So. All right, so let's put it up for the vote. You're going to buy, sell, or hold on sublimated camo apparel. Let's even the score here. Come on. See if you can go and buy. Totally redeem buy. yourself. Buy. I give it a few more seconds for the vote to get in. Okay. It and is a close one. I think it's close. I see the bar graph. All right. And the result is bye. You win. Bye. Yes. You win. Thank you. All right. Thank well, you. good luck decorating this, folks. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. If you so, need help, call me. Yeah. So you can decorate this um, with some techniques, but I would caution you, and I'll be, I won't be a sore loser. I'll just let it go. Uh, All right. For our next section of the Stalls TV morning show, we're going to turn it over to Courtney K or Make It Your Market. I'm Courtney Kay, and this is Make It Your Market. Welcome to this segment of Make It Your Market. For this segment of the Stalls TV Morning Show, we're going to talk about niche markets or growing markets that present a lot of sales opportunities and different techniques and trends to reach those markets and make them your own. So with this, um, with summer kind of heating up and school season just around the corner, I figured it's a perfect time to talk about the spirit wear market. So when it comes to schools, everyone wants to sell to schools. They think about football uniforms, cheer uniforms, soccer uniforms. But we often overlook the spirit wear market and the lucrative sales opportunities that are available to us with this specific market. So why do we do that as decorators? The first reason is we just typically overlook it. We're worried about uniforms. We want to get them printed. We want to sell those uniforms. So we don't even think about the t-shirts, sweatshirts, jackets, all those opportunities. The second reason? is fear. We traditionally just fear that um, it's highly competitive, we can't get in the door, it's too trendy. Um, there's just a lot of different things that decorators try to stay away from it, but the sales opportunities are there. So we want to give you three techniques, three strategies that you can use to reach this specific market. So the first one we're going to talk about is fundraising. So when it comes to schools selling spirit wear in general um, and inventorying it and having the funds to sell a lot of it, is very difficult. They don't have that type of inventory space and funds. So to help them, what I recommend is offering them to either design their own shirt or select a variety of their specific, of your specific designs for them to sell to their customers. Once you can decide on designs, create a sell sheet for them to distribute to their um, teams, parents, groups, school, um, school trends, all of those different markets that they can sell and different customers they can sell to. Of course, you want them to sell as much as possible, so we have to give them incentives as well. The incentives we're going to be looking for is just giving them a kickback of some sort for the garment that they sell. You then hold the inventory, you print them for them, you're making it very easy for them to sell, and you're giving them an incentive to do so. If you want to really take your fundraising and your um, partnership with them to the next level with the schools, offer to print an event. Of course, what way to sell more garments than to actually print when spirit and school pride is at an all-time high? The second strategy we're going to talk about is just to offer a variety of products and services. I hear it from decorators all the time. The schools in my area already have t-shirts. I get it. They've got t-shirts. But do they need more garments? Do they need sweatshirts, letterman's jackets, bags? There's more items that you can print with your print technologies, whether it's a heat press, a screen print, a director garment printer. And you have to capitalize on these to be able to sell more to those schools and really get your foot in the door and differentiate yourself. So printing these with unique finishes and different items and really offering that to your customers is another great strategy for selling spirit wear. Once you show them what you can do, don't forget to package these items together. That'll help you sell more on every customer and, of course, make more on your spirit wear. The third strategy and the final um, tactic that we're going to be using to sell spirit wear is just to stay on top of trends. I know it sounds easier than it is, but trust me when I say that nobody is going to beat down your door for a basic t-shirt. They just have plenty of them. They don't see the need to have another one if they have maybe a t-shirt from a previous year. So what we want to do is we want to offer something different, something unique, something that's really trending. So they talked about it a little bit with buy, sell, hold, but I want to just cover what's trending so far this year for the fall spirit season. Of course, the oversized shirts, they're not going anywhere. They're one of the hottest trends. So learn to print them. Of course, you all want to buy them. You showed that in the um, rating section of buy, sell, hold. Definitely get in on this technique. Another specific trend is just taking those t-shirts and upgrading them to more of a ladies' fit, trendy style. This is a nice heathered garment that's a, uh, from Boxer Craft. It's called a slub tee. 
And it's just very lightweight, very loose, has a nice trendy feel to it, um, and it's selling a lot in the retail market. And that's where you can get a lot of your trends. Of course, for male apparel, don't forget, and even females, um, don't forget to get into performance work. Get rid of those cotton sweatshirts, offer them something unique, something different, and something that they want, rather than those basic t-shirts. So now that you have these three strategies, you need to start to find the schools in your area. To do this, of course, you can Google for schools in your specific area. You can go online and look at the um, Department of Education for your state or maybe a neighboring state, depending on where you're located. And that will allow you to find all of the schools you can call. Once you have those schools listed, it's easy to get a principal to give you a name of a booster club leader, a coach, a PTO member, somebody you can contact. Now don't forget, the PTO members, the booster club leaders, all of those change year on year or every couple of years. So you want to keep your business in front of them and give you opportunity to either sell to a new leader or just keep your business afloat once you close to that current um, PTO member. So hopefully now you've got a couple strategies and trends. The school and spirit market is just around the corner, so it's time to get started buying these garments and selling them to your customers. I'm Courtney Kay, and this has been Make It Your Market. Thanks, Courtney. Appreciate you sharing that with some of our viewers here today. So the three tips were fundraising, more items, and following trends. And you can connect all three of those to grow your business. And we hope to share that type of in info with you all the time here on the Stalls TV Morning Show Trends. So you can stay up on top of this and really grow your business. Yeah, so this was a kind of virtual interactivity with you guys, our viewers. If you want to see us live, We'll actually be at the Printware Show this week in Indianapolis, so we'd invite you to come out for some live demonstrations, uh, live classes that we have going on, get hands-on with some of these garments and these techniques that we're talking about. So we invite you to see us there. If you want to check out the information, it's nbmshows.com. So we encourage you to check that out afterwards. Come see us this week. Excellent. This has been our first edition of the Stalls TV Morning Show, giving you buzz, news, and know-how at the frequency you need it. Signing off for Josh Ellsworth, Zach Ellsworth, and Courtney Kibitza. We appreciate you watching. Good luck in your business. We'll see you June 22nd.